Hey guys, Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So, since it is the holidays, news has kind of been on the slower side. Uh, we got a couple things this week. Um, first, we had another release from the company. So, Impact Wrestling has released Bob Rosen, who is their ring and transport manager, or transportation manager. And according to PW Insider, he was responsible for constructing Impact rings and driving them to events. He was also responsible for other logistical responsibilities, including security, production placement, and more. So he was with the company for 13 years. Um, I'm guessing this is more to do with the cost cutting. Uh, you know, he said he was. This wasn't his decision. So. I'm guessing that's what the reason was. Um, so, of course, since this release happened, um, rumors started flying around about Impact going back to the four-sided ring. Um, so somebody had posted on Twitter stating that Eli Drake and Johnny Impact, amongst others, had pitched to Callis and Demore that they wanted to go back to the four-sided ring. So Eli Drake caught wind of this tweet, and he responded saying, I don't know what Johnny Impact said about this, but I've never pitched to anyone anything about changing the ring structure. Don't believe anything you read. So I went a little deeper and found out that Johnny Impact, John Morris, and John Hennigan, whatever you want to call him, he, had, he was on Jim Ross's The Ross Report, and uh, he was asked about this question. So this is what was said. Um, Ross asked what Johnny's op opinion between the six-sided ring and the four-sided ring was. And Johnny said that there are minor differences, but he prefers the four-sided ring. Fans are watching what's going on inside the ring and feels the six-sided ring seems unnecessary. Jim agrees that about the six-sided ring confuses him and says that wrestling should essentially be mindless entertainment in the best way possible. Um... <laughs> John says wrestling should be escapism, and the six-sided ring can cause confusion to that. Jim adds that if you have to stop and process an escapism feel, then you're doing then what you're doing is not working. Which you know that's very true. But uh, me personally, I kind of like the six-sided ring. Um, it was definitely that unique feature that Impact Wrestling had. Um, I think AAA or in Mexico they. They were the only other people to use the six-sided ring. Um, so if they do go back to the four-sided ring in the future, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Like I said, as long as the action inside the ring is good. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are, but if you want to leave something in the comments about if you prefer the six-sided ring to the four-sided ring, I'd be interested to know. Um, so last week I had talked about Eddie Edwards dropping the uh, GHC championship to Cano in uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. Um, I actually got a chance to watch that match this week, and I would recommend this match to everyone. Uh, this was a very stiff match uh, between Eddie Edwards' chops and Cano's kicks. Uh, they had a, a bunch of good spots in the ring and outside the ring. Um, the match was about 25 minutes long, so if you have the time, I'd check it out. I know it's been uploaded to YouTube, and there's a couple other outlets for it. But it was definitely a great performance by both men. Uh, Meltzer had mentioned it on his uh, Wrestling Observer radio, so that's when I decided to, hey, let me go check it out. And I was glad I did. So this week's episode of Impact, which was the Best of 2017 Part 2, uh, drew 80, 285,000 viewers and ranked number 110 on Cable's Top 150. Uh, so this was the highest viewed episode since August 24th, which was the episode after Destination X. Destination X actually did over 300,000. Uh, but this is definitely a strong way to finish the year. Um, definitely on a positive note. Uh, so we spoke about Lashley and EC3 over the last couple of weeks and how their contracts expire this year, uh, or 2018, I should say. Um, but apparently Eli Drake's contract expires as well. Apparently all three expire in the early summer of 2018. Um, I'm sure the Lashley and EC3 rumors to WWE or wherever else are going to be flying until this, th that point in time when their contract's up. Um, but I really think it should be a priority for Impact Wrestling to uh, get 
Drake signed to a long-term deal. Uh, he was a huge bright spot in the company for most of 2017, especially when they put the title on him in August. Uh, so many ups and downs, but I think he outshined those downs in the company. I mean, just such good work, and uh, he definitely should be a part of those core performers that Callis and Demore want to kind of spotlight for the company. Um, and last but not least, uh, oh, actually, before we get to that, um, there has been talk about Impact doing house shows starting in March. Um, no idea where this is going to happen, but apparently they saved a ton of money by doing the show in Canada, obviously using Canadian talent, but uh, I'll get more into that when we have confirmation of when and where. But uh, now, back to what I was originally going to say, uh, a few weeks ago, I had spoke about Impact having a live pay-per-view in April, um, so PW Insider has confirmed that the pay-per-view will be the Steel Cage theme event known as Lockdown, so I think last year they only did Slammiversary and Bound for Glory, this year they will go to more live pay-per-views. So that's all I have for this week. I hope you guys have a healthy and happy new year. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.